Good morning. Welcome to beginner's Qigong class. I've always uh, mentioned to many of my patients that I'll be doing a video on Qigong and how to properly breathe during uh, Qigong exercises. I think that's one of the most confusing aspects of Qigong is how the breath is actually coming into the body, how the body should accommodate to the breath. And today's video is more to show how the breath should work with the body, how the lower diaphragm, the lower pelvic diaphragm needs to work and in a conjunction with the lungs and the primary diaphragm. And when you do do the April Hayes Qigong or Tai Chi or yoga, any of the internal arts family, this is a, a basic method of breathing. So again, this is beginner Qigong and an understanding of how this breath should take place. So you need this foundation to then build upon it. You know, when people want to do more advanced things like iron skirt Qigong, uh, then you definitely need to have this as a stronger foundation. So we'll build upon from here. In Qigong, we're working with our diaphragm, our respiratory muscles around our lungs, muscles between the rib cage, right, as we breathe in, the rib cage expands, the diaphragm lowers, and as we breathe out, the diaphragm pushes up, the rib cage comes down, and this allows proper respiration. Now what we want to do is breathe with the entirety of the lung, not just with the upper one third. When you breathe with the whole diaphragm, you bring the breath all the way down fill your entire lung up. So as we breathe in, the diaphragm comes down. Breathe out, the diaphragm squeezes back. So work with this for now, right? Learn to get this feeling. Breathe in. Now my hand is mimicking the movement of the diaphragm. When you breathe in, the diaphragm right, contracts and comes downward. And as it comes down, it opens up the lungs because it creates a negative pressure. So you have to draw that air in. And when you release, right, the diaphragm goes on back. for active breathing, right? When you're physically using your muscles to breathe and you're stretching the diaphragm, you're stretching open your rib cage and the intercostal muscles, right? The muscles that help you to breathe. So learn to work with these muscles just to even be aware of them. Because we just generally do a lot of passive breathing. Right? We don't think about it. We breathe enough just to keep our brain alive, all the essential functions. But if you actively breathe, you start to become aware of the muscles that really help you to breathe. And as you actively breathe more, you start to get those muscles stronger. You get your diaphragm strong. You get the intercostal muscles strong, and all the muscles that help with breathing, right? right? Your chest has to expand out and all the muscles that help to expand the rib cage, right? To accommodate more air. Now your very breath alone, just the air alone will push things out. And when you reach a certain point, you're gonna need help, right? To so lift the arms up and open, right? And bring up the shoulders back. And as you're opening, Closing, you're helping to get more oxygen into your body. So when you bring your arms back, right, you're opening up the rib cage, right, stretching open the sternum, and you allow more breath to come in, more air to come in. And then when you close in, you know. We 
squeezing the air out. A lot of practice squeezing that air out. So you have an idea what it's like and what muscles are needed to squeeze air out. And when you squeeze enough air out, just relax. Okay? You see how the air comes in. And, hold. and then breathe in. And you see how much easier it is to breathe in when you squeeze air out. Right? Your, your muscles just naturally want to recoil. Right? And expand. And let the air come in. So you want to work with this. Right? So we're going to try this. Right? Breathe in. And breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. I generally like to practice Qigong with my eyes closed so that I get more of an internal awareness of my body. So your eyes not distracted by you know what's around you. And when you do do Qigong, it's you know, obviously advisable to stay focused on what you're doing, put away your cell phones and any other distractions, so that you can truly concentrate on your breath and how it enters your body, how it moves within your body, and the way the muscles work within your body to allow the breath to come in and out. And you don't want the distractions during this so that you can truly focus because as you're taking a breath in, and if the phone goes off and your mind is elsewhere, you know, your chi is controlled by, the, by your thoughts, by your mind. And if you're distracted, you know, the chi can flow over the place. And you, you don't get the full workout. It's, you know, it's not healthy for you to do it that way. So you do work on your mental concentration, right? in addition to working on your muscles of respiration getting sufficient oxygen and nutrients and blood and just the overall what we still call the chi energy, right? It's just like the combined, combined flow of oxygen, nerve flow, blood flow, all throughout the body. And this nourishing energy travels through the body, keep the body alive, keep it healthy and vibrant. And our goal of doing Qigong is to open up the channels within the body. And as you open up the channels, you allow chi to flow. And when she is flowing in the body, you're going to be naturally healthy. And it'll just be that much easier to do things and allow proper lymph to drain and hormones to flow throughout the body. And it balances out the blood chemistry much more easily and makes uh, getting sick that much more difficult because nothing is stagnant and everything is constantly being cleansed. So your immune system is at its peak. So those are just some of the benefits. And as you get into more advanced qigong, such as iron skirt, you learn how to make your bones stronger by pressing the qi into the bone and squeezing out the uh, fat that's within so much yellow marrow from the bones, fusing it with red marrow. But we'll get into that in a different video. So let's continue on with this, and we're going to progress down to the next step. Okay? Where we're going to let the qi breath flow down to the lower pelvic diaphragm. This is down here in this area. Right? You find your belly button, below your belly button, right? Down to the bottom, right? Your perineum is your center at the bottom. And the perineum is located between the anus and your genitals. And you want to focus on that perineum. As you breathe, you're going to breathe all the way down to the lower pelvic diaphragm. And let that open. And as you breathe out, You're going to squeeze and pull the perineum up by squeezing, 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 uh, squeezing your uh, anus in and pulling your genital up. Right. Pull that in and breathe out. Right. And for many people, this is a little difficult. And you'll find that as they're pulling their perineum up, that they almost can't hold it, that it, 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 it somewhat twitches a little bit at the beginning because you're not used to using that muscle. And the nerve innervation to that muscle that's sending it, the, the muscle weak, so it starts to twitch a little bit. You feel like it's kind of just 
jumping up and down and you can barely hold it. That's okay, right? That's important to know how strong your pelvic diaphragm is by doing that. So as, as you try to pull it in and squeeze it and you feel that you can't hold it and it just, it just jumps, it's all right. Keep at it. Keep focusing on it and all the more reason to strengthen it to prevent any kind of incontinence or people who do have incontinence that will help with it. As we get older, if you don't use that muscle, you do lose it. It's just, it's just not a muscle we think about exercising. So as you learn to exercise that muscle through breathing, you're going to keep it strong and keep it chi and the body from bleeding out because the lower pelvic diaphragm was too weak. By keeping that strong, you don't allow the chi to flow out. So this is a little tricky, but take your time with it. Right? So it's the second step down after you're aware of your diaphragm and the muscles of respiration around your ribcage. We're going to now focus on the lower pelvic diaphragm. Okay. So this part, we're going to breathe in, and you're going to let everything relax. And let that breath come down, come down low, so that you feel your belly come out as you breathe in. All right, your belly's coming out, and it's like this way. It comes out it's this way. The belly comes in. And as it comes in, you're going to be squeezing your gluteal muscles, your anus, and pulling your perineum up. Right? Your genitals will be squeezed as well to pull upward. That takes a little practice. Okay? My knees are a little bit bent. And I squeeze out. And then I relax and I breathe in. Let the belly come out. Let the lower pelvic diaphragm open. And breathe out. Now many people struggle with this because they're not used to breathing down to the lower uh, pelvic diaphragm. They're used to breathing with their lungs. So when I say breathe down here, they still do this, right? They raise their lungs up, right? It's hard to get that pattern, right? They're still used to the upper chest breathing. So we don't want this. We want this, right? Lower. Not upper. So focus on it. That would take practice for some people. What I advise is to put one hand down below your navel, right, your belly button. Put it down low and the other hand covered. And your mind is going to focus on the breath breathing into your hand. So you're going to try and capture that breath with your hand. So you breathe into your hand. And as you breathe out, your hand will follow. Relax it. Right. Relax it. Right? As you relax, that air comes in naturally. Again, don't get frustrated if you don't get this immediately. For some people, this will come very easily, and for others, it's just a pattern that you have to break and change over. But don't move on until you get this. Okay? This is important that you actually, yeah, in some ways, master this breath, or at least be comfortable with it. Right? Because this is a very important breath, and it's very important to get the lower pelvic diaphragm strong. So when you have your lower pelvic diaphragm stronger, by then your right, primary diaphragm will be very strong already. At least practice. And when you have both diaphragms strong, that's when you can advance to other stages. Right? You can't have a, a shaky muscle and this pattern breathing and wanting to jump into the next set of breathing exercises that's more advanced because you can definitely hurt yourself by you know, just not getting achieved, traveling to the right place, not having your mind to have that level of control yet. So, Anyhow, don't jump to any other advanced videos until you really have some proficiency with the basics of Qigong. Okay. So let's try this again. I'm going to breathe down into the lower pelvic diaphragm.
muscles are going to squeeze too. Your thigh muscles, your calves, right? Every muscle you have on, you squeeze. Squeeze it out. And then relax. Breathe in as much as you can. And let the inhalation of the breath the form and method of which you're holding your breath. You're not holding your breath to this extent. You're not holding it like that. You're holding it through constant inhalation. And when you can't hold it through constant inhalation anymore, you then let it go. Sort of like squeezing, emptying an airbag or uh, one of those little, um, little play tools that you use in the pool as a, like a life wrap or a life jacket or you, you inhale it as you try to get the air out. You squeeze it fully until you get all the air out. So you want to use that mentality, right? Empty an airbag, squeeze all the air out. Right? And after you squeeze it all out, you hold and make sure it's completely out. Right? Like if you're getting ready for being, to be packaged airtight. And you hold it for as long as you can until your muscles say, okay, I can't hold this anymore. I need air. And then you relax and you see the air just come in. And it's very refreshing to have that kind of air come in. Ideally, you do it on a beautiful day like this, right? Out in fresh grass, trees nearby. And you breathe with nature. You take in fresh air. Doesn't matter where you do it, as long as you're doing this, it's going to be good for you. So, this is going to be the conclusion of part one of the, this video series. This is uh, Qigong for beginners. So, master this breathing exercise. Okay? Full inhalation. Okay? Holding through inhalation and then full exhalation, and then holding on full exhalation, right? And then relaxing and then go again into full inhalation, full exhalation, and pace yourself. And you want to be able to do this again until you get proficient, until it becomes very easy and you have good control of your muscles. And when you feel that you have that, advance on to the next one, part two of uh, Qigong breathing. Thank you.